Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to show you what's the color argument expression attribute added in C Sharp 10 and I'm going to explain why it is probably the most useful thing added in C Sharp 10 when it comes to logging and it really really helps you clear out your logs. Now without any further ado, let's go straight into the video. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell and for more training check out nickchapsas.com. So let's take a look at what I have here and the simplest way to actually demonstrate the problem is to show you um, the usage of the debug.assert method, which is a way to assert against a condition during debug mode. So let's say that I want to check that this array that I have up there will always have uh, some data in it. So I'm going to say debug assert that the array length is always more than zero so that we have something. That's a condition I always expected and I expect this to never fail. If this fails, then there's something wrong with my code. So I'm going to go ahead and run this. And as you can see, there is nothing going on, you know, this is all working fine. However, if this condition was something like this is always zero to expect that this is empty, then look what happens. The code will fail. So process terminated, a session failed, and it tells me where the problem was, where this violation happened. Now, this is awesome, but I know nothing about the violation itself. All I know is that something happened. Now, the debug.assert method has an overload that allows you to have um, a message. And what happens is actually Rider, my ID, automatically detects what I want as the message to be. And the message is this condition because it's helpful to me to know what type of condition caused this uh, asset to fail. So now if that fails, and it will fail now, I know exactly over here, as you can see, why it failed. This is so, so useful when you're trying to debug the application and see why that happened. And sometimes, you know, this tells me line five, but this might happen in production. Of course, it wouldn't happen with the debug method. Most likely, you're going to have something like this. Now, what I've written here already is this ensure that class. And this is a static class that just has a few guard clauses. And this guard clauses just wrap around some argument exceptions or argument null exceptions. Or we're passing down the parameter name um, as appropriate and also a message here. So if I go back to the program, I can say that ensure that it is not empty and I'm passing down the array. And what happens now is when this code executes and these steps here, obviously nothing happens here because the array is not empty, so that works. However, if I went and removed um, these numbers here and I said that, hey, this is actually an empty array, then watch what happens. This will fail. The argument exception is thrown and then we get an enumerable is empty and the parameter is value. Now this value name isn't really useful. The problem with this value name is that it is picked up by the I enumerable value parameter name in this method. It really doesn't tell us much about what failed. Now, this is what the color argument expression is trying to solve. And let's see very quickly in that same example how it does that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this it is not empty method and I'm going to add an extra parameter. Now, I know this will look clunky and we're going to talk about drawbacks as we go, but for now, focus on what I'm showing you. So color argument expression, and now this parameter name accepted here should be the name, the text name of the parameter of the expression I want to capture. And then we can call that string message. This needs to be a string called whatever you want, but it needs to have a default parameter here. This can be empty string, this can be null, ideally it should be empty string. So now I can take that message and replace it here instead of passing down the parameter name. And watch what happens now with this. If I go back and I run this code again, this will now fail and the parameter name is array. It is this. It is not value because color argument expression will actually take in compile time the name of the variable or the expression passed in the method that's being called and it's going to use that whenever you want it. Let me show you something else. If I didn't actually pass a variable down and I passed something like this here and I run this, watch what happens. I would get new int empty, new array int empty. I'm getting the full thing. I'm not getting just a variable name. I'm getting the whole thing. This is so, so useful when debugging an application from logs. You can also change that to array um, empty integer array. And if we do that, guess what? We are getting, again, the full thing. And this doesn't actually stop there. We can have like an ensure that, and let me just 
comment this out. It is true, and then we can pass down a, a variable. So we can say that array dot length is more than uh, zero to make sure that it is not empty. In this case, it is. Now for this to work, I have to go back and add the expression thing. So I have to say color expression again, the name of the parameter, and then string message is empty. Here we go. And then we can pass that down. And now when I run that, watch what happens. We're getting the full thing that caused it to fail. And you can do that for any number of parameters as long as you point to it using the name of the parameter. Now you might be thinking, hey Nick, why don't you just use name off to make sure that when someone refactors this bit, they don't just uh, break this string literal? Well, the problem is that you can't really use uh, name of something that hasn't really existed yet here. It's kind of out of scope, so uh, you can't really do that. So just so you know. And this doesn't just stop here. You could actually have full-blown expressions. In fact, let me just make an overload here and say that this should be true. And instead of a Boolean, I have a function that returns a Boolean. So I have to invoke it here. And if I had something like this, I can go here and do something like that. And in this case, when that fails, watch, I'm getting the full expression. This is so, so readable, so, so nice. This can be extended also in any way you want. You can actually go down here and say public static class extensions, and you can actually write this as an extension method. So you can have an extension method on the Boolean. I do not really recommend having an extension method on the Boolean, but I'm just saying you technically could, and then you would be able to use that here. So you could do something like that, where you delete that, and then you say it is True. Of course, I have to remove this from the intro that uh, thing. So it would look something like this. Not that you would write code like that, but if you wanted to make an extension method on that, you can. This works. Now, how does this actually work behind the scenes, right? Is it like affecting your performance? Is it something you should worry about? Is it something you should use, shouldn't use? Now, I'm happy to report that this is as efficient as technically it could be. It's the same as you providing at compile time the actual text every time down to the expression. Um, I can show you that because if I open the IL viewer here, you can see that the text is pushed as a string. And this is actually the value that will eventually be pushed in that method call as the secondary optional parameter. I mean, I should say that if you go ahead and just put your own stuff here and you run this, um, your own text will override the one that the compiler would generate for you, as you can see above my head. But if you do not, then the compiler, when this builds, will actually provide the text that you'd expect, the expression itself. So this is all compile time. This is not happening during runtime. It's just replacing the default parameter with whatever it should, picking it up from the expression here. Now, should you use this? Well, yes, I know it can look clunky having all these arguments and then optional parameters, things that you have to deliberately ignore so you don't just accidentally override this. I agree that the design of the API, it's not optimal. I think if they were to design all the color attributes from scratch, it could technically be better. But with what we have, the benefit of having it outweighs the drawback of the API so, so much. Because not only you know what went wrong and where it went wrong, but you know how it went wrong. This can really, 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 and I have seen it personally since I started using it since C Sharp 10 came out, that really help you debug problems in your applications way, way easier. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making these videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you're going to find a link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.